Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, in the last few days, Floyd Mayweather has given an interview with Michael Eric Dyson. I have a lot of respect for both men. In which Floyd has stated that he will not accept 50-50 to fight Manny Pacquiao. Floyd's argument is a market value argument. He's generated the bigger numbers. Also, just from a boxing achievement standpoint, Floyd Mayweather is unbeaten. Manny Pacquiao is not. Right? Well, let's think about this a different way. I hope Floyd reconsiders because I believe Floyd is missing a piece of the puzzle. There's more involved than market value. Just imagine it's the late 1980s. Your name is Ray Leonard. The public calls you Sugar Ray Leonard. Right? You've already beaten Wilfred Benitez, a great fighter. You've already beaten Roberto Duran, a great fighter. In fact, you've had two fights with Duran. You lost the first one. The second one is the infamous No Moss fight. You put on a boxing clinic. You are the guy who gave Thomas the Hitman Hearns his first loss. Then you've suffered an attached retina, health issues, right? You don't need the money. You are already easily recognizable walking down the street. You also, of course, have an Olympic gold medal. You are already on the short list of fighters who can make a claim to being the fighter of your era, the 1980s. Right now, just imagine with all that going for you, with all your Hall of Fame level of achievement, Right? By the late 80s, people look at you, they know who you are. You're widely viewed as a future Hall of Famer. Right? You are viewed as having been one of the best fighters pound for pound of your era by almost everyone. Right? Now just imagine if after all you've done, you understood that there was one fighter out there only one there was one fighter out there that could literally double your legacy as good as fans feel about you you understand that there's one fighter out there a fighter who has beaten Duran a fighter who has beaten Thomas the Hitman Hearns. A fighter who has not lost in the 1980s. In fact, has an 11 year win streak. You understand that there's one other guy out there who can plausibly make the claim within your weight range that he is the fighter of the decade. And you understand that that fighter is Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Now just imagine if you look at Hagler's style, you sense that he has a problem with movement, right? You sense that Duran didn't move as well as you. Thomas the Hitman Hearns for some reason gave away his movement in that fight and turned it into a slugfest. You understand that Hagler has fought a series of fighters. Mustafa Hamsho, John the Beast Mugabe, who stood and fought with him instead of moved away from him. Juan Rodan, and you think with movement, you can beat him. You think it's a winnable fight. And you understand that there's a huge difference between fans looking at you and saying, he's one of the fighters of the decade. 
it's between him and Marvin Hagler. And fans looking at you and saying, he is the fighter of the decade. Only one guy has beaten Hearns, Duran, and Hagler. Right? So you understand that as big as you are, there's a difference between being big and being bigger than big. Having a great legacy and having the legacy. You understand the only thing between you and obvious immortality for the era is Marvin Hagler. Unquestioned immortality. Now just imagine you sit down with Marvin Hagler's people. Hagler's actually willing to fight you. You know you're the bigger name. Right? You know you've had the bigger pay-per-view events. Right? You know your fights have been bigger. Your fight against Thomas Hearns was bigger than Hagler's fight against Thomas Hearns. Right? Let's say you know that with box office, you're just bigger than big. Your fight with you know, your fights with Roberto Duran was bigger than Marvin Hagler's fight with Roberto Duran. Now just imagine you sit down with Marvin Hagler and just imagine that Hagler's people look across the table at you. You're offering him a split of 60-40 or something like that. And just imagine if Hagler's people say, no, we want 50-50. Let's say you're going to have to literally give away to the Hagler side a few million dollars to make this fight which would vastly expand your legacy what do you do I think the answer is clear when you see Ray Leonard on a game show in a movie like he was the fighter with Christian Bale and uh, Mark Wahlberg when you see him on a talk show, on a boxing show, when he's being interviewed before a fight, I think the answer is clear if when you look at Ray Leonard today, and we're talking about 20 odd years after that Hagler fight, if you look at Ray Leonard today, and if while he's talking, one of the things that crosses your mind, other than my cat meowing, is Ray Leonard beating Marvin Hagler. If you consider Ray Leonard beating Marvin Hagler to be really one of the things you remember within the first 15 seconds of looking at Ray Leonard, if you feel that that fight literally catapulted Ray Leonard legacy-wise, in terms of what he accomplished over his entire career. If you believe that one night significantly enhanced your perception of Ray Leonard, then it's obvious that the answer is you've got to make accommodations to make the fight happen. Right? If a Marvin Hagler or if a Manny Pacquiao wants 50-50 parity and you're a fighter interested in legacy and you understand that 10, 15, 20, 25 years from now when people think of you, when people see you ringside at a championship fight, when people see you being questioned in the crowd or behind a mic and when people see you if they are thinking within the first 15 to 20 seconds when they see you 20 years from now of your fight against Manny Pacquiao then let me just say the few extra million dollars that you pay Pacquiao the premium you're paying Pacquiao the 50 50 percent split you're giving Pac Pacquiao would be well worth it because quite frankly just like Marvin Hagler had a monopoly on what he could offer Ray Leonard, right? There were other great fighters in the 80s. 
Ray could have fought Mike the Body Snatcher McCallum, for example. Could have fought Julian Jackson. There were some big names in the 80s. I know some people watching this video are nodding their heads. But only one fighter, only one fighter in the late 80s could literally lift Ray Leonard beyond superstardom. And that was Marvin Hagler. Just like right now with some great fighters. I myself believe that there are some tougher opponents for Floyd than Manny Pacquiao. The fight I'd like to see from a boxing perspective is Floyd Mayweather versus Sergio Martinez. But even I realize that for ter in terms of legacy, because of the public perception of the fighters, because of how it's playing in history, the fact that there's overlap between Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao in terms of their opponents. Ricky Hatton, Shane Mosley, now Miguel Cotto. Because they're fighting around the same weight classes and because they dominated in different weight classes. Even I, a person who believes Floyd beats Manny, understands that Manny Pacquiao brings with him a certain legacy-defining opportunity that nobody else in the sport can give Floyd Mayweather. That's what Floyd needs to think about. Put a different way and update it for today. And I know the facts are a little bit different here, but if you're Vitaly Klitschko, and you have earned the heavyweight championship of the world and you have established your box office today and you have done it by beating quality opponents like Tomas Adamic right if you're Vitaly Klitschko and Lennox Lewis suddenly appears out of nowhere and says I'm willing to fight you I want a 50-50 split if I were advising Klitschko we signed that contract today, right? Because there again, only one fighter in the world can give Vitaly Klitschko that beyond superstardom boost of legacy. And that's Lennox Lewis, right? You signed those deals. Would you think about the great? Really, one of the best fighters I've ever seen. Salvador Sanchez. If he didn't fight Wilfredo Gomez, and understand neither guy needed the fight. They were both great fighters as it was. But when you think about Salvador Sanchez, as great as he was for old timers, don't you, within the first 10, 15 seconds, think about that Wilfredo Gomez fight. Was there anybody else that Sanchez could have fought at that time to give himself that beyond superstardom legacy? So Floyd really needs to sit down. He needs to think about his side of the bargain. Right? Perhaps if he has to give Pacquiao a 50-50 split, perhaps there are other fights he can make that might get him more money. But he needs to think about more than money. He, thinks of, he needs to think about his total compensation. Right? Total compensation. If he thinks about his total compensation, there's no fight that can pay him more than a fight against Manny Pacquiao if he can win that fight, right? The reason why the Sugar Ray Leonard Hagler fight is so good for Ray is because Ray won the fight. If Floyd has no doubt, and by the way, let me just say I have no doubt, I, I believe Mayweather wins that fight, but if Floyd has no doubt that he could beat Manny Pacquiao, he needs to ask himself the day after the fight, is there another fight out there that he could have that would give him a bigger legacy and more historical significance 
the day after the fight than the day after beating Manny Pacquiao. Right? If Manny Pacquiao literally lifts his legacy to off the Richter scale, then he needs to think about making that fight. Especially if, you know, Pacquiao's asking for pay parity. Right? 50 50, make the fight, win the fight, get the legacy. 15, 20, 25 years from now, fans may look at you like they look at Ray Leonard today and think, wow, he beat Marvin Hagler, as well as the other guys in his career. You know, that's what you want. If Floyd beats Manny Pacquiao, He'll have an aura and a legacy that nobody else can give him. And I believe for that, if you're the Mayweather money team, you need to leave some money on the table to get that legacy. Pay a premium now, you'll get paid many fold later. Just like Vitaly Klitschko would get paid many fold later. If he were lucky enough to get the opportunity to avenge his loss to Lennox Lewis. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Let me point out too. Neither fighter has the moral high ground here. Right? Understand right before he fought Ricky Hatton, Manny Pacquiao came to the table and wanted more money. Even though Hatton at the time may have been the bigger draw. Certainly Ricky Hatton guaranteed you a stadium sellout. Fans traveled for Ricky Hatton, right? And Manny Pacquiao at the last minute wanted more money based on market power, right? So I'm not saying either fighter has the moral high ground here. All I'm saying is if I'm Floyd Mayweather and I'm looking at Manny Pacquiao and I realize that he is a beatable fighter, Right? And I understand that the public really has valued Pacquiao to such an extent that I can't get that level of legacy anywhere else. And if I beat Manny Pacquiao, even if I've beaten other tougher guys in the past, if I beat Manny Pacquiao, that's going to be one of the first fights people remember 15 years from now then I've got to think about, even if I have the greater market power, I've got to think about paying a slight premium, agreeing to a 50-50 split to make that fight happen. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.